Hi guys, it's a beautiful day once again and welcome back to Dexter's World Channel. It's early in the morning and I'm so busy cleaning this up because I would like to utilize this space for the breeding boxes of our Japanese koi, goldfish, and other fish like mollies. These are the things that we have to accomplish for this year 2022. Along the process, I'm sharing with you the ups and downs, even the secrets that we normally don't reveal. We reveal all the secrets on this channel. For our subscribers and for our followers who are also fish enthusiasts. And it's my dream that all of us will prosper together. And I am so glad to hear positive comments from people across the globe. And shout out to our members of this channel who made their efforts to make this channel possible by means of your support. Your support in your sharing and even the views and the watch time. Thanks a lot. Today's video, allow me to share with you some basic things in order for you to spawn your jumbo goldfish and actually these are simple tips but often neglected I am sure that after this video you're gonna be able to breed your jumbo fish let me just point out to you that there is really an importance if you're gonna condition your fish in the glass tank. I mean, this is a significant place for our goldfish, our jumbo lines, because this is directly hit by the sunlight every morning. And in conditioning your goldfish to hatch their eggs or to spawn their eggs, we have to bear in mind that we will provide them with enough sunlight. And early morning sunlight is really very necessary. By using the glass tank, you will see the conditions of the fish and you will see their behaviors, the way they swim and the way they eat their food. You can monitor easily if you will use this glass tank. And this is very important because you will also note if there are some issues on their skin, if they have issues on their bodies, then they will not breed. And that's the reason maybe that you are not successful in your breeding of this jumbo goldfish because they have issues on their bodies just like human beings if we have infirmities on our bodies then all our activities are really very affected so the conditioning place should be exposed to the sunlight and it is more advisable if you can use the glass tank because you can monitor their health and number two, we have to bear in mind that they need a lot of food. The feeding system on the conditioning is really very different because if you're gonna grow your fish, you can just feed them once or twice a day. But if you are conditioning your goldfish in order to spawn their eggs, you can give them as much as 10 times a day. A small frequent food should be given to them. Just like what you're witnessing now, you will see that they are already asking for their breakfast. And at 9 o'clock, they will eat again. At 10 o'clock, they will eat again. 11 and even 10 times during the day, they can consume that. If you can provide a good environment. And you will see that my aquarium has this uh, trickle-down filter. I have here the UV light. I have here two air pumps in order to provide sufficient oxygens 
and two submersible pumps. So these are actually backed up with several apparatus in order to make sure that they will maintain their A1 condition. So you will see here that we have a very long spawning tank. The measurement of this is actually 6 meters in length. The width is just 1 meter and then the depthness is 8 inches. And this is already good for the spawning tank of our big goldfish. You will see over here we have smaller tanks and these are the spawning tank for the smaller goldfish. So I already have discussed three things, basic. One is the conditioning of our goldfish, the jumbo goldfish, which should be made in the glass tank. And then number two is that the glass tank should be exposed to the early morning sunlight so that they can get vitamins. These are the natural things that they can get out of the sunlight. And number three, provide them with a long spawning tank. And number four, you will provide them with plenty of this egg collector because the jumbo line goldfish are fun of eating their eggs maybe you are successful in the, the, the spawning but after they spawned you will not see eggs anymore because they ate all of the eggs and this is very important you can provide them with vast of this nylon threads or maybe plants you can use that or even other materials just to be able to collect the eggs that are being spawned by the male goldfish because this, they are really eaters they have this strong suction on their mouth if they will eat that then hundreds of eggs will go to their mouth so these are the basic tips that we can mention to you and another important very important thing if you're gonna breed your goldfish provide them with good aeration so that they will not be busy gasping for breath good aeration means that's really strong aeration because it will give them the appetite to breed so i already have tried many times failing i mean i already have set up and then put all these things and early in the morning i just found out that they are not laying their eggs and one thing that i discovered is the lack of this uh, air pump this aeration and that's very important Just this morning, we were able to film the actual spawning of the jumbo line goldfish. And I'm so happy because in this tank alone, we're expecting to harvest more than 8,000 fry of goldfish. And this has been a good tank for us. The system, the measurement, and even the tarp that we are using. You will see, we use the white tarp instead of the black one. This is also very important and there is a significance by using this white tarp because it will allow us to have a clear view of the eggs even the fry so these tips would really be a big help to you if you are serious about this business and as you can see here you already have thousands of fry and they're already big and these are the offsprings of the big oranda that we have there in the aquarium and this is just spawned by one single parent and as we speak today we also have another kind of fish that are actually spawning right there these are the red cups so what i can see right here are just eggs everywhere sticking on this egg collector that we utilized and you will wonder that i have here more than 10 breeders all red cup orandas and they are actually busy now and a little later since they are not anymore laying their eggs we're gonna transfer them to their tank and one thing that i can reveal to you is the separation or the segregation 
between the male and the female. Actually, to provide them with energy and appetite to breed, you have to separate the male and the female just around two or three days before they're gonna be scheduled to breed, just to give them the excitement. And uh, talking about breeding, that's why earlier I mentioned that we have to extend over there because we're really filled with fry of this goldfish and this Japanese koi. And in fact, as we speak today, our staff had been so busy in digging another mud pan right there at the farm because we cannot contain this anymore. There are so plenty and they are massively producing babies. So this is the actual scenario here. We made this uh, boxes, just made of wood, and even this uh, tarp is very cheap. And then the measurement of this is quite big compared to the breeding tank of our goldfish. And in fact, the depthness of this is actually one foot. And in here, you will see that uh, there are many egg collectors. And you can see right here that there are so many eggs. And you will see that the result of our effort is good. It's quite doing good because you will see here that there are big fries that can already be seen. They are already very visible. See this one? These are the Kohaku Kois, the good ones, the good lines. You will see also that they are eating now this Tubifex worm. You know, this Tubifex worm is also one of the best food for our fry because aside from they will easily grow, this uh, Tubifex worm will not pollute the water because they can live along with the goldfish. So this Tubifex worm is the best food for our fry of this Japanese koi. But I would like to repeat once more that we cannot give them directly to our fish. What I mean is, if we get this Tubifex worm from the stagnant water, the polluted water, the dirty environment, and then you will get that and then immediately feed this to our fry, then they will bring bacteria and sometimes all our fry will be affected and they will die because of that bacteria. What can I suggest is you breed. 
and culture your own tube effects worm and I have so many videos about this culturing tube effects worms and in fact I have newly discovered method about the tube effects worm you just put them you know feed them with cooked rice and this is what I have discovered so you will see that there are so many fry in this tank alone you will see plenty and this is not a joke that's why we have to expand and extend our our tank and you will see right there that they are already eating their breakfast this tube effects and my concern is that since this tank is very small this is a small tank for a 30,000 koi fry my concern is the water management and this is the reason why I come here early in order to add new water right here because I'm so concerned about the condition of the water so I have here actually a small hose and you will see and witness now that we're gonna add some water right here well I have this uh, very important I would say important because this container is also good this is the used refrigerator and this was given to me by my neighbor we cannot directly put the water from the faucet because it's chlorinated so it's very delicate so we have to stack the water to age the water for three days and this is it we have aged this water already and this is already safe to be placed in the tank of our fry so we will do this one and we are doing this on a daily basis so see that very simple So I hope guys that with this sharing you can master and even become successful about fish breeding. I know that this is not easy. What I have told you are actually things that are learned by my personal experience out of breeding this several types of fish for 20 years. And I hone my skill in breeding and also I'm back up with great stuff that can also help me and achieve my vision who are also passionate about you know fish breeding and all the tips that I have shared with you are actually things that are important that if you are going to follow this one you will not go wrong and even become very successful in your breeding so I hope guys that you will continue to share and like our videos and shout out to the new members of this channel to the followers and even to those who made comments thanks a lot and for the regular members who joined this channel, I owe you a lot. Thanks a lot. And thank you for inspiring me. And I would like to see you in my next video. Only here at Dexter's World.